Uh, okay, so this is a joint work with uh, Joaquin Garcia. This was developed during my PhD that I just uh, wrapped up. So this was while I was a student at Pukihiyu and um, sorry about this. And uh, I was working at Lums as well. So um, actually, uh, whatever I go to show like my research, I have to be like very convincing while I talk about like some definite programming because for some reason, like a lot of people in the transition community doesn't like definite programming. But you know. That, that, that's fine. But actually, in here, I heard like those three days, I heard a lot of. So, but I guess maybe that's that more, more about us than about that to be, but that's fine. So, uh, if you guys also like um, computational complexity theory, you, everyone knows like P equals MP conjecture. And then, like, I would say, like, the second most famous conjecture would be the unique games conjecture. And basically, what, what it says is that. Um, for uh, a, a very large amount of interesting problems, actually, even approximating those problems is NP hard, right? And if the conjecture turns out to be true, you can say that um, for also a large class of problems, um, like the best you can do is using this like magical MC here. And uh, this tip is not like anything related to deep learning, if, if, even though like everyone thinks it is. Actually, it is like some depth program. So the best you can do would be like using any kind of uh, heuristics based on uh, some depth programming, right? But actually, it, it is like a conjecture. And then uh, I believe it was like last year there was a paper proving like early results that shows kind of an evidence that maybe you know the conjecture turns out to be true. And then I did like this very deep research to see if how you know the, the research community think about like this conjecture. So I found um, this post on uh, Reddit, and then someone was asking like the community what they thought if the conjecture was true or not. And then you can see about these three comments that you know like the, the vast majority do think that it turn out. And then so um, actually you can use. Um, Synaptic programming for uh, several applications. The, uh, the more classical ones are in control, but you know nowadays you have a lot of like machine learning problems that you can also uh, frame as a synaptic programming problem. And um, so actually, I was very surprised. That, like in the last like, two years or so, there was like two um, two pieces actually that was telling about synaptic programming. One regarding like self-driving cars, and the other is like deep space stuff. So maybe it's getting Type. And then, so if it's like so such a great tool, why no one uses like in practice? So the problem is that uh, naturally you, you have a, a matrix, and then this matrix, the problem, the size goes quite drastically. And usually, you, you're actually the real um, variable is that is actually um, is, is like a, this is the, the square of the real uh, size you're interested in solving the problem. And actually, uh, and also, uh, Sparks is not trivial to be exploited. And the first time I heard about the real server that has coded a position was yesterday uh, about the Cosmo that actually implemented this in real life. And um, even like formulating SDPs are not straightforward. And then, then that's where like jumps um, comes into the picture. And in, in practice, like state of art servers, uh, they cannot solve. Very large SDPs. So one way to try, try to tackle this is go through like the, the, this exploiting uh, sparsity, but we chose to exploit the low rank structure that several uh, SDP problems have. So there is uh, this theorem that says that if you have uh, an SDP with m constraints, you can find a solution that has at most uh, square root of two m rank, right? So if you don't have a lot of constraints, you will have at least one solution that's low rank. Okay. Um, and it, you can say actually that in practice, the several SDPs actually admits a solution that is, uh, has a lower rank than this. So this is like a loose bound. <coughs> and uh, interior points often return like the full rank solution or, and not like the low rank solution that we're interested in. And usually, people try to exploit um, this low rank structure uh, by using some kind of um, unconventional methods, like uh, 
like factors factorizing your decision variables, but then it turns out that your problem is not convex anymore. And then the whole thing about you know trying to solve a convex problem is that you you have this uh, guarantee, and then if you do this, you kind of lose the guarantee. So it's kind of a bummer. So what we did is that we developed this um, uh, this solver uh, entirely done in Julia, which is called like Brux STP, that does um, what I'm about to say. So here you have like what a uh, semi-definite programming problem is, which is basically uh, an LP. But instead of having um, the non-negative orthogonal here, you have like the positive semi-definite problem. But then you can do a, a lot more things with this. Um, and you can write the uh, optimal condition for this problem as this um, as the system here. And then you can also um, can rewrite this using like the dual variables. Uh, uh, why is here? Um, then what we do is basically we apply um, a first order splitting method that is different from Cosmo that was presented by Michael yesterday. So Cosmo basically would like separate uh, maybe this and this and split this way, but uh, we use this primal dual hybrid gradient um, splitting method that actually separates in between like primal and dual variables, and then you kind of but you can show like actually both of the are the same. <laughs> so um, actually, it turns out that the algorithm for this is extremely simple. You just need to do like matrix multiplications and know how to project on the onto the positive and that in cone and how to project on the box. So it's like very straightforward to implement, right? You don't have to, for example, uh, solve the the system m x equals b. That's one of the differences between the ADM and this um, method. Um, but if you imp implement this, it will be like extremely slow. There's no way to use this. And like the biggest bottleneck of this method is to project onto, onto the positive phone, which has like a, a cubic complexity. Um, okay. <laughs> so let's say that you have uh, an article that says the number of uh, positive uh, IM values like before for each iteration, then you could do this in um, in a squared complexity, but you, you don't have this. And actually, it turns out that we we after we started to implement the idea, we saw that it is actually better not to know in advance. If you uh, under approximate the target rank, you you would perform actually better. So the way we do this, we substitute like, the projection onto the positive seven cone by an approximate projection. That basically you have um, a number of eigenvalues that you want to see, and then you simply truncate it at this uh, eigenvalue. So it, it is actually a, a projection. So you are like projecting onto the cone, but it's not the orthogonal projection. And then the, the the interesting part about this approximate projection is that you can actually Bound um, how uh, how far away you are to the real projection, so you can kind of control the error with uh, using the mean Eckhartian mean just theorem, and then you can kind of know you know how far away you are from the real projection. And in the paper, we proved that if this error uh, decay, actually you will converge to the optimal point. So it, it is not like an heuristic. So if you apply this idea, you actually the way we do it that we start with a very low rank, like say rank two, and then we uh, apply the previous algorithm. And uh, whenever the residuals start start to behave like weirdly, and then they, they start not not converging, we start to check in which is the error between like the real projection and the approximate projection, and basically we double um, the rank every time this happens. And hopefully you you're going to converge um, without having to update so many times the, the target rank. Right. Um, so okay, if you implement this, it's not going to be extremely slow anymore. It's just going to be slow. <laughs> so wh what's the issue? So what happens is uh, that in practice, like I guess like most like everyone that implemented Silver doesn't actually implements what's the pseudocode solver. So what we do is that if you, if you see here, you have like a primal, a primal step and a dual step. And then um, you have to maintain those like fixed to guarantee converges, right? 
So actually what we do is that you, we start to uh, heuristically um, changing those, and then you also apply some kind of line search to see like how much overall accession you can have, <laughs> um, and some funny stuff about that. I'm not gonna touch this. So basically there, uh, this is the modified algorithm, and those are um, some results regarding uh, graphic partition, which is basically a max cut. And then you can see that, you know, uh, when the dimension of the problem grows, um, our solver, which is here, uh, it, it starts to be like uh, way faster than the others, like even first order on zero points. Same goes for this other problem, which is the sensor localization problem. Um, and uh, the more surprising result is this uh, MIMO experiment, which we know in advance that it has a rank one solution. So most of the solvers, they basically have a, a timeout. Then we were able to solve this uh, 5,000 by 5,000 uh, maker, which is kind of a, for SDP, is kind of a big deal. Um, so, OK, we developed this uh, new uh, primary dual method for solving SDPs. And um, we were able to exploit this low rank structure in a uh, controlled way that would guarantee like, convergence. Uh, and then we have the yet another uh, solver. Yes, we have a four now. Um, OK, so there's uh, other properties that I didn't talk about, because you have like some uh, feasible solutions, like permitted solutions that you can find using this. And um, actually, it would be very interesting to combine this idea of exploiting a uh, low rank structure and exploiting um, sparsity at the same time. Maybe this would be you know, finally would be able to scale electricity. And uh, actually, uh, several interesting problems that were mentioned yesterday as uh, some of the squares, they, they do have a uh, lowering structure and AC relaxation as well. So there are, I guess, there are a lot of problems that would be um, very interesting case study for 